Welcome to this video on Trust Members. This is one of several videos in a short course on structural members posted at Tiryaz Toolbox, a website that contains notes, examples, and algorithms for structural analysis. Please visit the website for more videos and other material relevant for this course. Trust structures are often visually appealing because they explicitly show how the forces are carried. Each member carries axial force only, so the direction of all forces are visible simply by looking at the truss. In that way, you can follow the forces from the applied loads until they reach the supports. Some members are in compression, others are in tension. Oftentimes, a truss structure is a bridge. However, by the definition of a truss member that is adopted in Tiryaz toolbox, we also see truss members in buildings. For example, a portion of a building may be supported by vertical rods that carry axial force in tension. All those forms of truss members are addressed in this short video. We have already seen in another video that a structural member is a mathematical boundary value problem. The boundary value problems for longitudinal type members have the following ingredients. External load equilibrium between the load and a stress resultant, section integration equation to link the stress resultant with the stress, material law to link the stress with the strain, followed by kinematic compatibility to relate the strain at a point with the global displacement. Those equations are established in this video for a truss member. The next slide shows the notation used in Tiryaz toolbox. X is the axis that runs along the member. Q is the distributed load in the X direction. N is the axial force, which is the only stress resultant that appears for truss members. A is the cross-section area. E is the modulus of elasticity, which we often call Young's modulus. Sigma is the axial stress. Epsilon is the axial strain, and U is the displacement in the X direction. The equilibrium equation is obtained by considering the sum of forces in the X direction for an infinitesimally short length of the truss element. The axial force changes by an infinitesimally small amount over that length. That change is dn, and the result is that the distributed load, q, equals dn over dx, with a minus sign, as shown here. Section integration is considered next. Because the axial stress in truss members are uniform over the cross-section, the stress resultant, n, is simply the cross-section area multiplied by the stress. Hooke's law is adopted as material law, which means that the stress equals the strain multiplied by the modulus of elasticity. Next, kinematic compatibility is considered. The relationship between the strain and the displacement is obtained by reconsidering the infinitesimal portion of the truss member, show in this figure. The dashed line shows the infinitesimal elongation, named du. By using the definition that strain is elongation divided by original length, the kinematic equation directly appears as shown here. The following slide shows the summary of the equations that we have derived. By combining equilibrium, section integration, material law, and kinematic compatibility, we obtain the differential equation shown at the top of this figure. It is sometimes instructive to combine all equations except equilibrium between the external load and the stress resultant. That can provide insight because we then see the direct relationship between the stress resultant and the deformation of the member. For truss members, the result is shown here. It says that the derivative of the longitudinal displacement with respect to x is equal to n over Ea. On the next slide we look at the general solution to the differential equation for truss members. The differential equation is of a form that allows us to simply integrate twice in order to find the general expression for u that is done here, and we see inside the green box that the displacement along the member is quadratic if the distributed load is constant. If there is no distributed load along the member, which is the most common case, then the two remaining terms suggest that the displacement varies linearly along the truss member. The two integration constants C1 and C2 are determined by the problem-specific boundary conditions. Suppose we wish to study a truss member that has zero displacement at one end and an axial force applied at the other end. That case is shown in this figure. Because there are two integration constants, C1 and C2, we need two boundary conditions. They are shown on this slide inside blue rectangles. 
The first boundary conditions enforces zero displacement on the left-hand side. The other boundary condition, which is shown on the right-hand side, makes use of a fact we learned on the previous slide. Namely that the derivative of the longitudinal displacement with respect to x is equal to n over Ea. That applies to the right-hand side, where the axial force is equal to the externally applied load, F, by substituting the general solution from the green box into each of the two blue boxes, we obtain two equations in the two unknowns, C1 and C2. After we have found their value, we are left with the final solution in the red box at the bottom of this slide. It does indeed show a linear variation of the displacement along this truss member. It also shows that the displacement is zero when x is zero. Finally, it shows that the displacement is equal to f over Ea times L on the right hand side, where the external load is applied. Thanks for watching this video. Please visit Tiryaz Toolbox for more videos and more material relevant for the modern structural engineer. See you soon!